That's right, guys. I'm so excited to welcome the mighty Hailstorm Grammy Award winning artists, Lizzie Hale, Joe Storm. Guys, welcome back to the Power Hour. How you been? Woo! Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, man. We're great. <laughs> we're so hope. glad that you guys are here hanging out. Yeah. You look great. Is that a, is that a new filter you guys are using? Yeah, there? right. Only trying it all out. <laughs> it's like a reality filter. Real makes the reality shinier. <laughs> uh, no, it's great to see all of your faces, man. We miss you guys. We, we miss, miss you. you. <laughs> We, we, we say at the same time. time. You gotta buy me a coke. I will buy you whatever you want. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, so tell us, guys. You've been touring for the album "Back from the Dead." It was a great record, number one rock record. Uh, I know that uh, besides touring, you guys have been working on some new material. Is that is that true? I heard you've been working on some new songs. All, always. We're always working. Yeah, on it's um, it, it's it's so funny how in between every album cycle, there's always this period of of just just writing for the sake of of writing and the songs come out in a totally new personality because you're not you don't really have like okay we're writing an album now we got to like figure it out thematically no it's just all over the place you know I, <laughs> it's fun it's the most fun it's like just freeing there's no pressure you're just putting stuff down and a lot of it ends up being like the seeds of of something great that we yeah. can use later it usually falls into a, a few different categories like one is like okay it's like me being like sad on the piano <laughs> um or you're writing like a, you're writing like a, a a metal riff that we have no business doing that i'm trying to figure out how to wedge into the hailstorm legacy or we have this like kind of side imaginary band where we just write everything is, is just about ass it's just all about asses and tight but. pants but yeah I want those to are the those songs i love it and talking about new music lizzie you have been doing so much with other musicians like yeah. avatar you were featured on one of their songs and then of course the journey cover that we love so much yeah. with daughtry separate ways which was featured in the latest season of stranger things and it blew up and now their cover is blowing up i want to know since you are working on new music if you could collaborate with anyone and have anyone come into your studio and record a song with you who would you have I mean, well, Dave Grohl doesn't count because that is just a no-brainer. That's not even a thing. Yeah. Um, anything with with you know the the master himself. Um, let me think. Dead or alive, both. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Let, let's yeah, let's do both. Let's do both. I mean, right now it would be really cool. I mean, like there's Spirit Box, which I love those guys, and I'd love to do a collab with with them. Awesome. Um, let's see. Um, who else to collaborate with? Um, as far as like idols go, um, I still haven't done anything musically with the Heart Sisters, so I'm gonna put that out in the universe, or perhaps Pep Benatar bring her out of you know, out of out of the Italian kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, That's awesome. I, I love it. And I'm really excited for, for new material because, you know, we're getting new material with Lizzie being featured, but we're ready for some hailstorm. We're ready for some new hailstorm. I got to say, uh, Chris Daltrey told us that he uh, forgot that you guys had done a cover of Fleetwood Max The Chain until he was on the Internet. He was looking on YouTube and he goes, oh, we, got, yeah. we did that together before. It's funny because he's. He sent it to me. He texted me. He's like, check us out. And I'm like, and I guess I had forgotten about it too. I'm like, when did we do that? Oh yeah. We, Wait, when did you do this that? Is, this was like in the middle of like COVID thing. Oh yeah. We were, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there. that's, it's all a blur. <laughs> it's like, when was <laughs> that time doesn't exist. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, a uh, he's awesome. Uh, you know, Chris and I have done so many different things together since we, uh, since we recorded separate ways and uh, we we like we have our own little like I don't know personality in in the group chat you know he's he's like the sister from another mister I never had he's like texting me his outfits You're like I, I was thinking about wearing this on stage but then not this what do you think you know and he's like I'm such a girl I'm like that's awesome I never had a sister before so <laughs> I'm glad it can be Chris <laughs> So I feel like you guys are are like pioneers as far as bringing rock and roll uh, to Nashville, which is such a you know popular country town. And I know that I, you know you go, you do like almost a, is it a karaoke night or a grunge night that you guys do down there? Oh, sometimes there's all there's always something happening in Nashville. There's like grunge night, emo night, 
metal night. There used to be uh, this amazing uh, thing that would go on every Tuesday. The uh, Rock and the Roll, rock and roll residency. residency. And like this was going on, you know, a decade ago when we were when we first moved here. And I remember at one point in time, they asked me to get up and sing and we're doing like a like a Judas Priest cover. But then it's like Rachel Bolin from Skid Row is on bass and there's Kip Winger and you know, um, and Brad, from Brad Whitford from Airsmith. I'm like, what is this world? I need to be part of it. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, there's always something going on. And, and Nashville is extremely diverse. Um, you know, everything from, you know, the contemporary Christian music of the 90s stars to, you know, some of the corn guys live out here in Megadeth. And there's some of the crew guys out here. And then there's, you know, I just all, all walks of life. It's a good rock and roll. Time. Yeah. With that being said, what is your ultimate karaoke song, both for you <laughs> and Joe? I would love to know the number one song that you perform every single time when it comes to karaoke. Well, uh, until I did the version with Daughtry, it was Separate Ways by Journey. But now <laughs> I, now it's like, is that weird now that I've recorded it to I mean, go back up and... and you, you ruined it. I, I ruined it. I mean, I, <laughs> Every now and then I'll do something really weird. I'll do like some Bonnie Raitt or something, you know, like... I can't make you love me. It's a real bummer in a bar. And I don't know why I like to sing it, but that's not the best karaoke song. Everyone's just like thinking about the, you know, <laughs> either the person next to them or whoever they left at home. It's like, it's a kind of, a, I don't recommend that. What about you? you? Know, I got to say, oh, sorry. Yeah, Joe, go Joe's go got to go get one. I always just go with Bill Withers. Lovely day. <laughs> just one note. Just hold that out. <laughs> <laughs> one note the whole way. You know, Bill Withers, great soul artist. Hey, you know, our Access TV audience may not have heard this incredible story, but I've been going to see you, Lizzie, since you were a teenager performing live when you and your brother RJ were starting out and you were only like 15, 14 years old. And uh, you guys were these really young, excited kids, wanted to play rock and roll. Can we talk about the story about how you came up with the name and you were on your way to a contest? Tell us a bit about that story. Absolutely. Well, uh, the, you know, this is a few years before we met, Matt. And, and I have to say before I dig into the story how appreciative I am of your kindness back then. Because, you know, when, when you're in it, when you are a 15-year-old, you're like, yeah, this is cool. I'm going to be in a band. Oh, look, that's Matt Pinfield. Let me give him my CD, you know, and you're that way. But then I understand from your perspective, not everybody would have been that gracious to a 15 year old and so i just want to thank you for that lizzie i want to say thank you so much for saying that it was it meant it meant the world to me and watching your career sail the way it has and just become this incredible guitarist songwriter front woman powerful woman uh has been beautiful for me so thank you for appreciating that you know i was a believer from the time you were a young kid oh i know you great. were man and i, I, I appreciate love that. it so but the 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 way we started the band, so my little brother and I, music was always just kind of around, you know, in our house. My dad's a bass player. We always had a piano hanging around. And we uh, we were just kind of, you know, we learned instruments for fun. And we were doing it, like, in our parents' living room. And and uh, then we ended, up, we ended up entering ourselves in a talent show at the Schuylkill County Fair in Pennsylvania. So it's like hay bale tossing. There's the talent show. You know, <laughs> like they're judging sheep somewhere. Um and on our way to the talent show, uh, little bro, um, you know, being a typical little brother as he was, uh, was bugging the hell out of me on the way to the show and just basically saying, like, sis, we can't have we can't just go up there as Lizzie and RJ Hale. We have to have a band name. And I'm like, bro, we're not a band. It's just the two of us. Like, we're just doing this for fun, whatever, you know, just ignored him he wouldn't let up so um so i'm like fine well, what do you want to call it and so we tossed around a couple like weird like we're gonna be the hale family band or there's some other weird one and then he ended up kind of just saying how about hailstorm and i said well yeah that, that'll work for today we'll introduce ourselves as hailstorm <laughs> so that'll work for today lo and behold like 25 years later we're still hailstorm but um it was crazy that that day just turned my whole world around because i didn't understand the power of standing in front of an audience that has no idea who you are playing a song that you just wrote that, you know, it's like a five minute song with a drum solo in the middle of it. Um, we were scared to death, you know, we're just shaking. And after we got done performing, 
I just remember turning the little bro. I'm like, we have to find somewhere else we can play. We have to do this again. And, you know, later on that night, um, ended up talking to the parents and coming up with, with harebrain schemes and a little bro with a mash with a mouthful of mashed potatoes is like, well, I get, I still get to play drums with you. The right sis. And like, yeah, man, we're a band. So like, we just never stopped after that, but, um, silver lining. So we did not win, um, first place at the <laughs> Schuylkill County fair. We got the third place trophy. We lost to a tap, tap dancing cowgirl and this other, <laughs> Young, young lady <laughs> that was singing Little Orphan Annie's Tomorrow. What? Yes. <laughs> what? And, yes. And, they and were get, like, we feel bad for the old woman. She yeah. needs to win. It's unbelievable. And she actually, Lizzie, I know this. You keep that statue for third place next to your Grammys at home. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Which is great. That is so yeah. cool. Yeah. So it, it, it was funny, like, finding it in the in the move. I'm like, RJ, I still have it. <laughs> right next to the Grammy. So <laughs> since since you stuck with the name Hailstorm, did you guys ever think about changing it? And were you trying to come up with other names? Or did you just, you were just like, OK, we're done. We, we Maybe changed. we'll change it eventually, but never came up with anything else? Yeah, we changed it for like a, a hot second. Yeah, really quickly. And then quickly, it's like, let's just keep let's just storm. keep it as yeah. It was um, bad. It was what, bad. What what what? Um, it was method of. Seduction. Oh yeah, it was method of seduction. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm glad yeah. they didn't change their name to that. <laughs> yeah, this is pre I get off, but I think I was starting to explore explore those subjects. I'm like, this will be great. We'll have like M O S and whatever. Like, we'll create a logo. But then we 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 had this um, string of uh, like high school like gigs you know like we go to another person's high school and, and play a show and they were very concerned about the name change because it's a high school so we're like well let's go back to hailstorm let's just keep it that we know we know that. i'm, re I'm really like glad you stuck with hailstorm it, it, it's hard it, it's hard to come up with band names that's a terrible like position to be in not anymore yeah i've got a full list I've oh yeah no you do. Names. if anybody ever needs a band name <laughs> Now, continue, you tell me about that, Joe, because I always hear these stories about there's like this thing you can do online as a generator of band yeah. names by putting words together. And you come up with the craziest names ever, like <laughs> light bulb aroma or, uh, <laughs> you know, like, you know, or pregnant insomnia or something like, you know, there's crazy <laughs> names. Sounds like a psychedelic band from the 60s. Tell me about that. No, my mine, Wait, is what is mine is just usually drunk. I don't remember putting them in and <laughs> it'd be a great band name and just write it in. And they're Whoa. bad. They're terrible. What do you I like the the anti buddies. The anti buddies. <laughs> I liked the taste buddies. The taste buddies. Yes. I'd be in that band. We try we try to convince my little brother with his side project that they sh they should name it Taste Buddies. The but taste they buddies. we were giving that away for free, but they didn't take it. They did not take oh, it. Oh wow. Yeah. You could have a contest here on Access where, you know, a band could be rechristened the Taste Buddies. And oh. be, you guys will present it to them and, and gift it to them. Need a band name? Don't worry, we'll decide it for you. <laughs> Honestly, when we worked together on No Cover, one of the bands could have used that because oh, remember like, Slaves oh to Humanity? And we were like, that should not be your name, Slaves yeah. to Humanity. You get tongue-tied every time. It's just, like, forgettable. And they should change they their were... name. They were like adorable children. Yeah, and they weren't even old enough to get into a nightclub. I <laughs> yeah, saw yeah. them standing outside a nightclub literally one night, and uh, they were like, well, we can't go in until we play. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't allowed in the door because they weren't of age. Yeah, they are all they were in high school, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure, which was crazy. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, I mean, obviously, you were talking about these bands, and you guys, you know, it's, it's crazy to think, right? Uh, as you said, 25 years. Uh, you know, you're, in, in some ways, uh, elder statesmen. Uh, yeah. You know, Man, you guys that, seeing out that there. Is true. And and one of the uh one of the uh like just it, it's kind of like a I don't know, a, a christening or a rebirth in your career when all of a sudden and this has happened to me like four times post pandemic, like you you venture out into the world and okay, now we're hanging out at bars again and there's always somebody, like some young, like, you know, twenty five year old comes up like, Oh, are you Lizzie Hale? I'm like, Yeah, I am and she's like my mom loves you or 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 you get like the manager of the bar be like you got me through middle school i'm like yay hey. <laughs> there he's in like my oh, defense, no. i'm like stop my, my mother, mother is a fan of, of yours too so you know yeah, it's, well you know it's it, it, but it's a rite of passage it's like we make fun of each other because i'm like okay i guess we're old now we're we're lucky to be we like, are lucky 
still you're do not, it. You're not old. You're, se you're seasoned, you know. Yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, I was just curious if there's any bands now that you're seeing that sort of remind you guys of your, yourselves coming up. Are there any bands out there that you want to champion or that I, I know you guys are so great about bringing out young bands, but uh, anyone that you guys wanted to sort of shout out or, you know. Man, the, the girls in the warning. Yeah. Like, we absolutely love. Yes. Them. They're so awesome. Oh, they're, they're way fierce. more talented than we were at their age. Though. Yeah. They're... <laughs> and can you tell us the story about how you gifted them a guitar? It was a pay it forward oh, thing yeah. that you did with the band because Oh, that's that was another great story of you being really kind to another young artist. In fact, they are incredible. These three sisters from Mexico. Talk to us about that. I love oh, to hear that story. They're amazing. Um, so, uh, and first of all, you know, people, you know, say I'm kind because I give things away. I do it very selfishly because I know that if I can do that for somebody, it's going to just make my day a whole lot, be whole lot better. You just like I was more excited than I think <laughs> than she yeah. was. Um, but so I wanted to kind of pay it forward because, uh, back in the day, I, I forget where we were in Austin in like 2000, San Diego, San Diego thank 06. you. In 2006, we were playing with Shinedown in San Diego at this club and, uh, the then guitar player, Jason Todd, um, ended up you know, handing me a guitar on stage that I assumed was his guitar. I just broken a string. We didn't have roadies back then, you know. Um, and so I went back to go switch out during the set and he just puts this beautiful, um, you know, Gibson on me. And I thought I was getting his guitar to borrow. It turns out that he went across the street and he bought me a guitar. And I was like, just flabbergasted. And I asked him, I said, well, what what can I do what can I do for you? You know, thank you so much. It's super generous. And he said, well, um, you know, whenever you see a, uh, a young woman that inspires you as much as, as you inspire me, um, I want you to pay it forward. So that's what I've been doing over the past couple of years. And, and this, um, Danny, the, uh, lead guitar player in this band, um, the only guitar player in this band, um, the warning is just incredible. You know, she's like, you know the the little sister of randy rhodes it's just amazing to watch her work and watch her attack the audience so i i was i scoured the us and i found this uh gibson explorer um for her and in the middle of her set i was in cahoots with her with her roadies in the middle of the set um they were doing a guitar change and i just i walked out and i handed her this guitar now same exact thing she comes up to me after the set and she's like hey thank you so much for letting me borrow your guitar that's really cool and i'm like oh no 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 that's that's your guitar and she's like what <laughs> and then she's crying and her parents are crying and everything and so i'm telling her that, you know this story and and i said you know you're, you're the future of rock guitar and and you know i want you to have this instrument so that the the world of rock can be a better place and um and she looks great with that guitar man like you see her up on the big screen uh, oh yeah it's but, awesome how but no, big the explorer is I'm i know because she's so tiny <laughs> just massive you know the first time you told me that story uh, you actually were in tears I gotta say that, Lizzie, because it was a very emotional moment for you, and I thought it was beautiful. To, you know, I just gotta tell you, it's just you know, it, it's it's the little things, man. It's it's the little kindnesses, and and if you are able to um, do something for someone for no reason at all, um, that's I don't know, that's humanity at its best. And so whether it's you know you walk in. Uh, you know, next to somebody at the airport and you're like, I love your shoes. Like that can make somebody's day or you can give them guitar that makes their day too. <laughs> I love that. That oh, is yeah. such a sweet story. Yeah, so for fun. everyone, pay it forward always. It's really easy to make someone's day. Yeah. Be good to others. Mm -hmm. Treat people the way you want to be treated. That's what I always say. Not, not to out uh, Lizzie, but I think she and Joe, but I think they carry about 500 guitar picks with them at all times that they hand out to <laughs> Uh, to kids, but they they really are uh, so generous and nice, and and of course so generous and nice with your time to come on the show today. And we can't thank you enough for joining us here on the Power Hour, and we hope you come back again and again and again. And we can't wait to see you guys out at the festivals. We want to thank you uh, for coming by. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. And make sure you give a squeeze to your girls for us, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.